Okay, as a psychologist, I'm a bit worried about this new brain rot trend. I feel this kind of hyper addictive, hyper stimulating, fast paced, short form content can't be good for children's brain development. The content has no substance and seems way too addictive. Seriously, what are these videos about Crocodile, Bombardino, and Cappuccino Assassino? I, I don't get it. Maybe I'm just too millennial for it. But seriously, something about children watching these videos just doesn't seem healthy to me. And up until making this video, I couldn't quite exactly put my finger on it. But I found some research to back up my suspicion on this. So let's deep dive into what that is and why we should all be worried. I'm Hayden, psychologist in Australia, and this is my channel, My Cartography. Starting off, I think we need a definition of what exactly brain rot is. Luckily enough, Oxford Dictionary has just come out with a definition for us. Also naming it the 2024 word of the year, incidentally. They define it as the supposed deterioration of a person's mental or intellectual state as the result of overconsumption of material considered to be trivial or unchallenging. Basically becoming a zombie slayer to low quality, nonsensical, short form content. Stuff like this. These videos are really addictive. You watch one, it's good, so you want more, so you swipe to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and before you know it, a whole hour's gone by and you've wasted that whole hour. Honestly, that wouldn't be the worst thing. I mean, it's entertainment after all, and there's plenty of things that we watch that provide no value other than entertainment. I'm looking at you keeping up with Kardashian. Just like do it like that and I'll like lean in. But what's concerning about these brain rot videos is the focus on attention over substance. Attention is the name of the game in social media. It's all about getting people to watch your video over another video. And you do that by making your video as eye-catching and engaging as possible. Believe me, I know, I'm in the game myself and I'm trying to understand the whole system myself. For the record though, because I do value how my audience perceives my videos, my focus in this channel is all on quality content, not that low quality brain rot clickbait stuff. Hopefully you guys agree. Anyway, with the brain rot videos, one dangerous byproduct of this attention at all costs mentality is that it trains the brain to expect fast paced, over the top, high sensory value content in all areas of your life. What that translates into is an inability to tolerate long form content. Your attention span gets halved. You might've even noticed it yourself. Do you struggle to get through a whole movie? Do you go on your phone if it starts to get boring? Do you give short videos like five seconds to work out if it's for you and if not, you're just gonna swipe on to the next one? Well, I certainly do. <laughs> for adults, this isn't something I'm too concerned about though. Don't get me wrong, attention issues in adults can be quite impactful. It could impact your job performance, but I'm more concerned about what it would do to the child's brain because the adult brain is relatively stable. It's hard for new behavior patterns to get ingrained as an adult, and it's easier to overcome those behaviors if they start as an adult. What concerns me is the same impact on attention, but with children. Let me break down why. Children's brains are extremely sensitive. They're like little sponges. They'll soak up everything in their environment, even if it's things that you don't want them to. And this is because their brain is in hyper-development mode. During the first three years of life, the brain triples in size. Neurons pop up everywhere and neural connections link all different parts of the brain. What's more is the brain is constantly adding and cutting these connections depending on what's happening in the outside world. If it links up two neurons one way but finds out it's more efficient to do it another way, it cuts that original link and strengthens the new one. We call this pruning and it's just like hedge pruning. You cut a bit here, you cut a bit there, you cut a bit everywhere to make it all clean. The brain is more effective if it has multiple ways of connecting the same bits of information. And it's more efficient if it cuts off the pathways that aren't being used. So it needs to do this pruning in order to develop. And this pruning is partly what makes the child's brain so sensitive. Because what happens in the immediate environment affects which neural connections are cut and which are prioritized or strengthened. For example, if the child is consistently told that this is a dog, their brain will shift connections around to make sure that the visual image of that dog is connected to the word dog and the sound dog. Anything that was previously connected, such as the image of a cat, because it is also a medium-sized four-legged furry animal, will be pruned off and unlearned. Now, because of all this neural growth and pruning, we like to refer to the child's brain as plastic, meaning it can be easily molded. To be honest, I kind of wish that they went with the word Play-Doh because that just makes more sense in my mind. You can easily mold Play-Doh. 
Anyway, moot point, they've chosen it. Coming back to it, things that mold the child's brain are their experiences in the outside world. Their interactions with parents, their lessons at school, the games that they play with friends, and well, what they watch on TV. Take a second here and think about what I explained earlier about the impact of brain rot videos on the attention span of adults and now what it might do to the attention span of children. Now consider this. As the child grows up, their brain becomes less and less plastic and more and more concrete, meaning that any changes that happen to the child's brain are likely to remain that way for the rest of their life. And further to that, we know attention capacity in childhood is associated with many key factors of successful living later in life. Things like socioeconomic status, divorce rates, substance use problems, and incarceration rates. So what exactly does the research say when it comes to hyper-stimulating videos and the child's brain? Well, we don't have a heap of research in this area yet, but one thing we do know is that the rate of ADHD diagnoses in children has increased by about 30% over the past 20 years. I wonder what's causing this. Honestly, it could be a number of different things. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Check out my video on mental health disorders for a more detailed take on how to explore these kinds of statistics and break them down. Anyway, from the research that we do have, we can speculate that these brain rot videos might be a factor contributing to the higher rates of ADHD diagnoses. First off, studies have found that young children's TV shows are much more fast paced than those designed for older children and adults. This rapid pacing can cause immediate issues with attention related functions. I'm talking about right after they watch it, they have issues with attention. The rapid pacing has also been associated with increased risk of attention problems once that child starts school. In other words, rapid pace videos, not good for children. Seems fair, but why? What is it about these videos that makes them bad? Well, they can cause some big changes in the brain. Changes that push up the child's threshold for stimulation, meaning that they need more exciting stuff in their life in order to meet that threshold. And if they can't get that through videos, they're going to seek that entertainment elsewhere in order to feel settled. Maybe it's by being a nuisance to their brother or their sister, or maybe it's causing up a fuss and not wanting to do their chores because they get some kind of entertainment aspect out of it. That's the broad idea, but let me show you how exactly it can affect the brain through this my study. Yes, I know my study, it's not as good as human studies, but it's unethical to subject real children to experiments that could cause ADHD. So this is why in this kind of research, we're often left with correlational and longitudinal data, which is good, but it doesn't have the strong cause and effect relationship that you find in experimental research. So that essentially just makes it hard to say that this thing causes this thing. Brain rot videos cause brain issues. And plus another thing, this kind of research on the impact of brain rot videos on children's brain is in its infancy. So we don't really have that much research out there to begin with. That's why this my study is very groundbreaking in what it has shown. Let's take a look at what it is. In this my study, they took 10 day old mice and split them into two groups. One group had nothing done to them. They were the control group. The other group, the experimental group, were subjected to 42 days of excessive sensory stimulation. They listened to cartoons and had colored lights flashing at them for six hours every night. These mice then had a break for 10 days followed by some behavioral testing. These tests involved a bunch of mazes and platforms and experiments would assess how these mice responded. The control group did the same behavioral tests during the same time period. The results are very interesting. Here's the open field test. In this test, the mice can freely roam around a square space. As you can see, the sensory stimulated group were far more active and keen to explore. In the light dark latency test, the mice can move between light and dark rooms. Again, we see the experimental group really seeking out whatever stimulation they can find, this being the light. And then here in the elevator maze test, the mice can choose to stay within the walled areas or explore the open arms where it's more novel, but it's also more dangerous because, well, they could fall off. Which area do you think the experimental group chose to spend more time in? Yep, the open arms, because it's more novel, it's more exciting, it's more dangerous and risky, but stimulating overall. All up drawing from this and the other key findings of the study, the researchers concluded that even a temporary stretch of media use 42 days can significantly alter the brain and behavior. Mice that experience the sensory overload develop significant neurobiological alterations in two different areas of the brain. The nucleus accumbens, which plays a key role in motivation, reward, processing, and learning, and the amygdala, 
which plays a key role in emotion and emotion based learning. Researchers also noticed that these mice showed an increase in risk taking and motor activity, but a decrease in anxiety, learning, and memory. Again, this is coming from my study, so it's not a given that these results translate into humans. However, some new research out of Swinburne University might have found results that back it all up. In this welfare study, researchers used functional knee infrared spectroscopy to record brain activity in young adults whilst they engaged in different forms of screen use. They found that although watching TV and video game were associated with increased focus, social media was associated with decreased focus. They also found that when gaming, the brain uses up lots of oxygen, but when it's on social media, the brain uses far less. In other words, it seems like the brain works harder during gaming in a good way than when it does just scrolling through social media. The researchers put this down to the fact that gaming is interactive while social media is passive, which makes all the sense. So what do you think about all this? How worried should we be about children watching these short form, fast paced, high sensory overloading videos? I think a fair bit, but that's me. I'm a psychologist after all. What's promising though, is there's some pretty simple solutions to all this brain rot stuff. Let's check out what they are. One, setting limits on screen time. The Australian Institute of Family Studies recommend against any screen time for children under two years old. Only an hour a day for children aged two to five and only two hours a day for children aged five to 17. I know this can be really hard. Parenting is hard enough without an iPad to keep the kids occupied, but this is children's brains we're talking about here. We wanna make sure that we can give them the safest environment that we can to allow their brain to flourish for development. I'd also recommend trying to limit your own screen time as parents, at least around your kids. For one, kids pick up on a lot of things and as they get older, they're gonna take in a lot of hypocrisy out of that. But two, more importantly, modeling a healthy relationship with screens and phones can be a great way to help kids learn that screens aren't everything. There's other ways to get joy in your life. Two, restrict certain types of videos. Where possible, limit the types of videos your child watches to slow paced educational content. Scrap the brain rot stuff and other hyper addictive short form content. They're like a pure sugar diet, hyper addictive and void of substance. TV shows like Bluey and The Wiggles are much more better suited for child's brain development. And three, encourage non-digital interests. Kids 20 years ago didn't have any iPads to pass the time and kids 70 years ago didn't have any screens at all to help pass the time. And yet they did. Kids want something that's novel and fun. That's why they like these brain rub videos. So take a lesson from these brain rub videos and try and find an activity that is novel, fun and engaging for them. It doesn't have to be complicated or even cost anything. Building a miniature playground out of kitchen utensils might seem wild, but kids love these kinds of things. It's novel, it's new, it's fun, it's creative. That's what keeps kids engaged. Brain rot has a way of doing that, but we can also model that in regular activities in the real world. Bottom line, if you put the effort in, get creative, you can make kids like almost anything. I know overall, trying to make these changes in the digital age, in the iPad age, is very, very hard. And so these are purely just suggestions after all but they are important suggestions to make because like I said, we're talking about children's brains here after all, and they're in a sensitive time period for brain development. They are vulnerable to these brain rock videos, but that's it for this video. I hope you can see now why I'm so worried about these brain rock videos. We don't want a cohort wide attention epidemic. And for the record, many of these videos just look really weird. That's my own personal take based on none of the research. I just, I don't understand them. I see my young nephew and stuff on him and I'm like, what is that? But that's just me. Hopefully, you know, we get to a stage where it's like 30 years from now and the Gen Alpha kids look back on this and they feel embarrassed by it. Okay, so in between filming and editing this video, I got to admit, I came across a lot of videos from my generation, the millennial kind of brain rot material, I must say, which seems very weird and it's just got me remembering things like the chocolate rain guy the numa 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 guy nyan cat and i don't know maybe we're a bit too harsh on the uh alpha generation the gen z generation and how weird their brain rot content is because i think a fair few years ago older generations were thinking us millennials had just as weird stuff coming out equally as embarrassing to see the milker blames the baby's DNA chocolate ring.
Here's a link to the mental health video that I mentioned earlier in this piece. It gives a much more detailed account as to what might be contributing to the mental health crisis that people say that we're in. And if there is a legit rise in mental health diagnoses. But for this video, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe if you're enjoying this kind of awesome psych content. I know I am. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.